it's uh, end of the season. Your season ended a little earlier than last year. You won the Japan Cup in 2010, missed it this time around. So uh, what was the reason for that? Yeah, we're just... Uh the team's running a bit low on batteries actually, we've had such, a, such an impressive year, I think we've been racing full gas every uh, every week since the start of February and uh, the team just wanted to, thought it would be best just to, to skip that long haul trip over to Japan and obviously I'm sad to miss it but uh, I think my, me also, I mean, I was really uh, really quite really quite tired at the end of Lombardia last week so uh, yeah, I was, I was quite, although it's a shame to miss out on, on, on defending my title over there, it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was, I think it was the right decision in the end. You're Irish, but live in, in Girona in Spain. You don't often get back here. So what has you back in Ireland? Yeah, I did a Garmin event in uh, Chain Reaction Cycles in Belfast on Saturday. And uh, yeah, that was really, it's really nice to meet people all the time like that. And uh, just to be back here and see my family and all of the weather's not too great at the moment. So I did, I did ride a couple of times and I love, it's, it's great to ride around here. I mean, I love coming back and, uh, yeah, and to yeah, just start my off season with a bit of, uh, bit of relaxation time. Okay, you've had a really strong end of season, obviously the strong performance in the Vuelta Espana, but then more recently second in the Giro di Lombardia. Can you talk about that race? Yeah, Lombardia, um, obviously I think you can see by the pictures at the end that I was quite frustrated. Uh, but with hindsight now, I mean, it's a fantastic result and it's a great way to go into the off-season uh, on such a high. And second place in the Monument, I mean, there's only one person better than, than me on the day and that's, uh, that's really exciting for the future. It's, especially considering the, the build-up into the race, it was kind of a surprise and maybe that's why I, I raced how I did in the final as well because I wasn't expecting to be so good in the final and uh, yeah, maybe if I had been a bit more confident, I could have, I could have uh, the race could have happened a bit differently but yeah, it was, uh, with circumstances, it's a, it's a fantastic way to end of the year and it's a beautiful race that I hope to try and win one day and this now proves that I can, I can actually get a result although my record in that race now is four starts, and two top tens, two, two DNFs so it's kind of <laughs> a real love-hate relationship with the race. Oliver Zog won it, uh, was very strong on the day. I mean, looking back at the way the race played out, is there anything you could have done differently to ensure that you got to the line first? Uh, I was really proud with the way I rode that day because I really did save as much energy as possible throughout the race and the, the team did a fantastic job in looking after me and uh, I think tactically as well with Christoph in the breakaway and in uh, well, Johan in the first breakaway, Christoph in the second breakaway that went with Nibali and Gilbert and then we uh, and then I was saved for the end and Pete Stettner did a great job on the last climb just really set a hard tempo at the bottom and as a team we, uh, we really showed that uh, we're working well together now and, and it bodes well for the future as far as that goes but then that last climb was basically a case of getting up it as fast as possible and, and seeing what happened at the top and that's what I did and Oliver had like <laughs> we could hardly see him at the top so he was definitely the strongest and he uh, yeah we, when he attacked we just couldn't follow everybody was going as hard as they could and he was just stronger on the day so yeah like a fantastic ride by him presumably though this is very big for your confidence because it's it's now shown that you are a bona fide contender for, for these races that you can win these in the future yeah obviously there's a lot a lot of people can race racing over 250 kilometers it's a it's a different different thing to 200 and to be able to prove that I can do that. I, I've always had confidence that I could do that after 2009 and getting eighth, eighth in Lombardia and I was fifth in Plouet as well. So they're both really long races and then last year I came close in Plouet to winning. It's, uh, I seem to react well over the long, over the long race, long, long classics. And yeah, hopefully we can uh, get my allergies sorted at the start of the year or, and, and really hit this top form for the, for the Ardennes classics because they're races I really love as well. And it's more, uh, I think if I really enjoy the races, it's like Lombardia, it's, I'll get really passionate and train even harder for them. And you mentioned the Ardennes Classics, is the one in particular that you'd like to win of the three? I think at the moment Fresh Alone really suits me the best because it's, it's the explosive final climb and yeah I'm not sure I'm quite physically able to do all three in the one week at the moment because it's uh, like the fatigue levels at the, by the time you get to Liège, it's after Amstel as well, it's uh, so I'm not, I'll have to talk to the team what we're going to do next year but I might just do the same as I did this year and really focus on Fresh Alone and, and and then try and try and back that up at the age, but uh, yeah, the age is, as well. It's one of the biggest races in the history of the sport, and obviously, as a cycling fan, I like the, to be part of these races is massive. But to uh, to be contending for the win now, uh, yeah, hopefully we can we can step up next year and, and try and be in the front towards the final. What for you have been the highlights of this year? You've you've had several good performances. So what stands out when you look back at the season? It's a tough question. <laughs> No, I think it's just the whole season, as a, the season as a whole. I've shown a lot more consistency with uh, 
with Catalonia and then I think that's reflected in my my top 10 in, in the world tour ranking it's it's such a but I mean I just to miss out on winning a pro tour race with two seconds and a third over the season it's uh, that's kind of a bit although yeah with the stage win I did theoretically win one but it's yeah to miss out on an actual pro tour win it's uh, that's, that's something to, I'd like to change for next year and uh, but yeah I mean to back up Poland the way I did with a uh, like as defending champion, have all the pressure on me as well. That makes me really proud. And every race is every race makes me proud for different reasons. It makes and I think it shows a big progression year on year from last year. And uh, yeah, I hope we can just keep on building on that, as I say, and have a really solid solid winter and rest up as much as possible, and then and hit next year hard. Peter Sagan won Poland, but I think if you had the course that you'd had last year with the tougher climb, you know, I think it's probably fair enough to say that you would have come out best. Um, so. Are you pleased with how you rode that race, given that the course wasn't necessarily suited to you? I think I did everything I could possibly have done at that race. I mean, it's, like Peter was really strong that week. He, he's, he won three stages, and with those time bonuses, he uh, he won the race. And I, I made a couple of mistakes as well. I mean, I, I lost time to him when, he, when I got second to him on the sprint, on the on the fourth stage, I think it was. And then when he won his second stage, I also got caught behind a split in the peloton that lost me five or six seconds. And with that, I might have cracked. Like, I might have won the race on the. I would have been leading into the last going into the last stage with a bigger time gap. So, yeah, that definitely would have changed the race a bit. But I mean, no regrets. I never have any regrets after races, and I just got to be content with the fact that I did my best. And and it was uh, it, it was it was more, it was definitely a big building block on the way to a solid welter as well. You seem. I mean, there's some riders that get quite stressed out by not winning or indeed in the build-up to a race they're quite stressed out but you always seem you know relaxed and you have quite a philosophical attitude is that to do with the fact that you're a young rider maybe don't have enough pressure or has this always been the way that you approach racing that you you know you you, you don't treat it as a life or death situation i think it's important to keep it in in uh, in uh context the racing it's only at the end of the day i always say it's only a bike race and I'll be happy as long as I do my best, and I feel mis- I count myself very lucky to be able to contend in these races now. And I think you see what happens in Wilder this year. It's life's very short, and it's to be stressing going into these races. And it's yeah, it's it's very. Uh, I think I've always just been like this going. I've had a lot of pressure from a young age, as far as my family background, and people are always going to look looking out for me. So I grew up with this pressure, and if. if I think the pressure comes from people thinking that you're good enough to win and if other people think I'm good enough to win like why shouldn't I believe that I'm good enough to win as well and but the results doesn't really matter to me it's it's more a case of doing my best and and getting the most out of myself and then seeing what happens at the finish line and obviously I really enjoy winning immensely and I'm lucky enough to be to be in the position to be able to win and have a strong team behind me and the backing of uh, the backing of Garmin Sevilla to to help my progression in the future but I just got to hope that the, uh, the progression keeps on happening and we can uh, continue the run of results that I've, I've been lucky enough to achieve. You've been around, it seems like years, but you're still only 25, so that must be encouraging as well that you, you're continuing to step up a level each year. Yeah, it doesn't feel like I've been mean, four years a pro now. It doesn't feel like it's it's really flown by, especially this year. I mean, it's gone so fast. and Yeah, I, I just it's, it's just this frustration again with my allergies at the start of the year. I mean, I think it's quite clear to people now the difference between me and... April and May and in August, like it is a bit of frustration. But then I'm always, I'm always going to have that bit looking forward to the end of the year that I can, I know that I'll come through and be able to make strong results at the end of the season. But obviously missing that, like there's a lot of big races at the start of the year and uh, a race that are like, fundamental to the to, to the cycling calendar. So it's, it's. Uh, hopefully we find a solution for that this now and uh, and that will that will yeah bring me on again and we can start challenging. Last winter you had a, an operation in your nose to try and correct the allergies and you thought that would be the end to it but again they, they flared up again this season so what sort of thinking do you have to try and rectify the problem? The operation was never really a thing for the allergies it was more to cure something that was, was caused by the, the, the allergies caused that's what, that's what it is yeah and uh, so it was a, like the thing with my, with my nose operation it did it has helped immensely I think that's like that's partly to do with my strong results at the end of the year because it's it's basically allowed me to to get more oxygen in my lungs in terms of non-allergy so it has improved me overall but it's just the allergies at the start of the year it's a case of it's uh it's the inflammation in my lungs that needs to be we need to find a, a way to to help me out and we think we found that now we found we, i just went to see a specialist in july in in holland and and he's been very helpful so hopefully we can uh, 
but that's again the problem. I mean, we never know. If we've, every year we try something new, and it doesn't. It hasn't worked so far. So, but we don't know that until we get to allergy season again. So, it, that's that's a frustrating part. But it's also sort of a big a big level of progression and for the future. And I don't think many guys have got that that progression of adding 20% to the performance in the sprint. You talk about you think you know how to rectify it. Is that is that a diet change? Is it an inhaler, or what do you do to try and rectify it? It's just a different way of taking the same inhaler. To be honest, <laughs> I've been uh, I haven't been ta- I haven't got the right technique in taking in my inhaler. So it's uh, yeah, it's as simple as that, and a little a little modification like that. Hopefully, this this guy believes we can uh, we can make a big big improvement. And I mean, even in make a just just a I mean, we saw this year. At, at Catalonia, I was able to. I was lucky enough for the allergy levels, the pollen levels, to decrease for the week, and yeah, I was able to make a result. But then the very following week, I obviously had good form, but then Pace Vasco, I was stuck to the road and couldn't even finish. It was like, like I was missing 20, 25 percent of my of my performance. <laughs> you take that off anybody. So it's just that level of of training hard and getting the good form, and then not being able to use it. It's but again, I'm mean, I'm philosophical about that, and it's just the way it is, and. We're, We'll, we'll deal with it hopefully in the future and yeah you've ridden several grand tours before and, and while there was strong performance in individual stages i think this year's Vuelta was the first time you really stitched it together over three weeks so how important was that for your confidence i was never really lacking confidence as far as that goes it, i'd never tried to ride general on a grand tour before so it was, i'd always just been going looking for stages and because i mean i never like i never it was more important for me. I was always running for the team or running for somebody else, or again losing time on purpose to try and go in the breakaway to win stages. So it was really important for me to try, like try and ride every day as hard as I could this year and and test myself to see if it's it's possible for the future. And I think I saw that. I mean, I had a really bad time trial, and if you take that time trial away, I would have been well inside the top ten on GC. So it's uh, that's that's really promising for the future because it's also something that we can work on and change. And in, like, I think it's a lot easier to turn a time a, a climber into a time trial, a strong time trial list than uh, than the other way around. And I've definitely got the speed in my legs for the for the climbs. I just need to to work on my TT bike a bit more, and uh, and that that's more of a, a core strength thing. And yeah, it's, it's it's something else that this team's I mean the best team for working on my time trialing because it's one of the strongest TT teams in the world. So yeah, for the that's, again that's you say for the comp- my confidence going into Grand Tours in the future. I know now, I also know now I can I can empty my tank every day and give it everything and especially the Vuelta this year, I mean it was a case of being good every single day and, and that's what's so promising but yeah I mean I still I still think I'd trade stage stage wins or stage results over over GC at, GC at the moment anyway. Can you talk about that stage win? You it started off you attacked in the final climb with Nicholas Roach, your first cousin and, and then things progressed from there to uh, to your first Grand Tour stage win. Yeah, I think I need to maybe need to start reflecting on how I race, but uh, it's the it's the fact that I race on instincts. I kind of I attack first and think later, and then I think maybe it's entertaining, although not the most comfortable and probably more painful way of doing things. But it's uh, no, it's, it's the way I love racing, and to to, to win the race from being the, like everybody everybody in the front group wanted to win that stage, and to be the strongest guy on the day and win the sprint like that, like the way I did, and, and even have a bit of time to to celebrate it. It was. Uh, Oh, it was just a fantastic experience to be climbing in the in the front with all the fans and yeah I think I don't think I'll ever forget that that, that day as far as just the team looked after me all day it was cr- really windy crosswinds all day and I had I had all the big guys the classic guys Andreas Clear looking and Johan and Heinrich Hausler looking after me all day and it was just like yeah the whole team worked pulled together to to put me in the right position at the bottom of the last climb and and then. Uh, yeah, then I was able to finish it off, and I think people were a bit surprised by that first result, being the first mountain stage, and it was a real teller for the first day. Well, it wasn't the first mountain stage, but the first real mountain top finish after Sierra Nevada, and it was, uh, yeah, just just to come away, put my name on the trophy, and of such a famous climb, yeah, it was just unbelievable. You're very fast from a small group. People don't always expect that from a climber, um, but you showed it that day. You also showed it in Lombardia and in other races as well. Have you always had that, or is that something you've trained for? I think I've always been quite quick. As a, as a junior, I was always fast, and it's it's just a case of like in previous years, I haven't had the power to push the bigger gears in the sprint, and that's that's what's hindered me. But when it, when it's a really hard race, I'm all, I've always been. Uh, I don't want to say it too much because I think people still don't see me as as, fat, as being fast and. Uh, I'm hoping people are going to continue taking me to the finish line because it's it's, uh, it's it's nice to have that little bit of a kick and 
and that's definitely how you how you get good results. But also, I am working on it a lot with my coach, and I do a lot of weights weights in the gym and stuff, and that's just that that, that helps in all round as far as the 30 second power, one minute power, and it's it's a real strength thing now that I'm, I'm gaining, and I think every year hopefully I'll, I'll continue to build on that, and yeah, well, uh, it's it's a nice position to be in, especially when you look at the Tour de France route for next year. I think there's a lot of stages that are possible for uh, for a small group to arrive together in the finish.